It's an infectious disease affecting nearly 2 million people in the U.S., but experts estimate an additional 2 million people are infected and don't even know it. It can creep along very silently and have absolutely no symptoms, even no abnormal liver tests on the blood, which is why most people get tested for 30 or 40 years before bad things happen. Dr. Douglas Dietrich, professor of medicine in the Division of Liver Diseases at the Mount Sinai Medical Center, is talking about hepatitis C, which is often referred to as a silent killer. Usually by the time you have symptoms, it's too late. That's because the hepatitis C virus spread by blood-to-blood -blood contact causes chronic inflammation in the liver, which leads to scarring. Advanced scarring, or a condition known as cirrhosis, can eventually cause liver failure or other major complications, including liver cancer. About four times as many people will die in 2020 from hepatitis C as in 2010. And the number of people with cirrhosis with hepatitis C, which already numbers around 25%, will hit almost 40% by 2020. There are two major misconceptions about hepatitis C that Dr. Dietrich wants to help clear up. First, not all hepatitis C patients are IV drug or intranasal cocaine users. Many people around the world, probably the majority, got it through the fault of the healthcare system. That is, they got uh, infected needles when, from vaccines uh, or other medical uh, devices when they were in the developing world. That includes patients like Karina. The 34-year-old mother of two was diagnosed with the virus two years ago. It was a total shock and it was stressful, like, first week because, like, you know, you don't know what to think. Born in the Ukraine, doctors believe Karina was most likely infected by a non-sterilized needle used for a vaccination. Neither her husband nor her children have tested positive for the virus. It's, you know, not about being clean or dirty or, you know, you know, sleeping with 20 men or being married with one, you know, to one for 16 years. There's no difference. You know, we're all humans and I guess if something is, you know, supposed to happen, it will happen. Other ways you can get it are body piercings, just earrings at the mall, tattoos, manicures, pedicures, boxing, rugby. Along with shattering the stigma surrounding hepatitis C, Dr. Dietrich also wants patients to know testing positive for the virus is not a death sentence. He should know. This is a grudge match, uh, actually, for me against this virus. So um, I, I wanted to take part in it myself rather than sit on the sidelines. Back in 1977, he was in medical school and accidentally stuck himself with a needle infected with hepatitis C. He then suffered from a rare but acute reaction to the virus. But I turned bright yellow and actually I was out of work for six months uh, and then sporadically for another year actually I was disabled by the virus. Dr. Dietrich explains limited treatment was available before the 1990s. Even then, his first 15-month treatment regimen, three interferon injections every week, failed in 1992. When ribavirin became available in 1998, um, I got treated again. And that, th at that time, I took daily interferon uh, injections every day, plus the ribavirin for about 18 months and I'm happy to say that it worked and I'm cured. We've come a long way since 1998. In fact, within the past year, the FDA approved not one, but two new drugs for the treatment of hepatitis C. Dr. Dietrich explains the drugs have nearly doubled the cure rate while cutting treatment time in half. Now's the time, if you have to have it, we have the two new protease inhibitors on the market, which give us an 80% chance at a cure. And actually beyond those two, even if they don't work, if you happen to fall in the unlucky 20%, there are probably 30 other ones, 30 other um, hepatitis C direct acting antiviral drugs under development now. We're studying many of them here at Mount Sinai. Part of the game plan includes encouraging patients to join the team and participate in clinical trials. So all over Mount Sinai, not just in the liver division, clinical trials are really the new wave of science and I think that uh, it's a great win-win for patients, uh, physicians and for the uh, public uh, when people volunteer for clinical trials. While work continues on the clinical front, Dr. Dietrich encourages everyone to speak with their physician about whether to be tested for hepatitis C. If we can treat you, we can cure you almost all the time. So now's the time to go get tested. Uh, and before it's too late. To learn more about the fight against hepatitis C, including how to get involved in clinical trials, visit mountsinai.org slash hep C.